ISFPs in 20 words. Number one, receptive. ISFPs have a sensitivity to life. Put simply, they notice things others don't. At times, it can seem like they see more detail in the world than most. It's kind of like when cultures don't have a word for colour, and therefore can't spot it easily, or see it at all. ISFPs have more colours, more words, a broader and deeper palette for the delights of life. Number two, ephemeral. Life is an inherently fleeting experience. This can be alarming for many. Often, not for ISFPs though. They can exist there, in that state, with an ease and comfort that is very life-affirming. They know how to live. Number three, non-judgmental. They often adopt a live-and-let-live philosophy, embracing a non-judgmental attitude towards others. Although at times they don't play the social game with finesse, or play it at all, they instead allow authentic connections to grow, organically and without force. For this reason, they can reach people in ways others can't. Number four, eudaimonic. ISFPs often seek a eudaimonic existence, striving for a life that is rich in experiences and personal fulfillment. Number five, individualistic. This is the eternal byword for ISFPs to me. If you wanted to capture their whole archetype in one word, this would be it. Number six, resilient. ISFPs exhibit a quiet strength and resilience that enables them to weather life's storms with grace. Number seven, aesthete. The stereotype of ISFPs being artists exists for a reason. They have a certain sensitivity to the sensory realm that other types simply don't. I think it's because, via their two main functions, FI and SE, they experience things equally on an emotional and sensual level. They experience both simultaneously. Those two things are inseparable for them. Then, because of their third slot NI, they're also entirely open to the symbolic, abstract, and metaphorical parts of a work of art of any kind. Number eight ingenuous. There is a kind of purity to ISFPs, something, if not innocent, then raw to the point of seeming unblemished by so much of the, well, bullshit of life. Number nine, intuitive. Yes, you hear that right. Introverted intuition plays an inextricable role in the life of an ISFP. For this reason, they can often miss type as INTJs. In fact, I dare say that many INTJs out there are in fact ISFPs. ISFPs can also look a lot like INFPs too, since they have FI as a dominant function and an intuitive function, NI, that they deeply value. ISFPs are extremely adept at dancing in the conceptual and philosophical realms. Number 10. Undiscovered. I couldn't think of an easy word to convey this notion, but I see ISFPs as being hidden gems or diamonds in the rough. People who aren't self-promoting or seeking the spotlight, but are instead immersed in whatever captivates them. When other people get to glimpse this, it's a real, unexpected treat. Like stumbling across an undiscovered but beautiful land. Number 11. Perfectionistic. Because they know precisely what they want, ISFPs can have impossibly high standards, especially when it comes to their own creations or work. People rightly see ENTJs as being demanding people, but ISFPs have this side to them as well where they will push people hard, be exacting with their requirements, and harsh with their criticism if things aren't right. Their intense understanding of their own preferences also leads them to being, number 12, obsessive. The FINI axis is one that predisposes ISFPs to being obsessive. They can submerge in their own personal world, becoming utterly absorbed in a hobby or pursuit. They are just like the ISTP in this way, able to drown out all else so the object of their obsession can be better in focus. Number 13. Vibey. I think that ISFPs are simply the best at both creating and embracing the full spectrum of vibes throughout the human experience. Number 14. Rebellious. In my view, ISFPs are the quintessential rebellious archetype. Whereas their INFP cousins share the same distaste for standardization and homogenization, ISFPs are more action-oriented and therefore push back with more overt force. Although they would prefer to be fashioned in the image of their own loves and desires, it is common for them to define themselves in terms of what they stand against. This can be both a bad and good thing. Number 15. Scattered. Their suppressed TE inferior makes them unsystematic. They have their moments where they embrace that, but it's often because they're dealing with the consequences of neglecting it for so long. Giving so much airtime to their own feelings means they'll be pushed in conflicting directions because of them too. Further adding to this scattered approach to life, they sometimes fall into. Number 16. Uncompromising. This trait is also, as George R. R. Martin might say, a sword without a hilt. Both a source of tragedy when they refuse to bend and concede ground, and a triumph 
In times where an individual stand is what's needed. Number 17. Fiery. This word I often use to capture a side of them that many miss, namely, their passionate, burning intensity and forceful nature. To neglect this part of them is to truly misunderstand them. They can be hot-tempered and reckless even. There is a mercurial quality to them that keeps people on their toes. Number 18. Textured. This one is a personal association I have with ISFPs, a kind of abstract way to view them, but also something I've seen consistently in practice as well. They like fabrics, layers, and textures in their clothes. They want to be adorned with varied materials. That speaks to something about them, though I've never known quite what. It's a desire for the feel and sensuality of things, but I think something more as well. Number 19. Unassuming. ISFPs rarely blow their own trumpet, and often don't like their trumpets blown by others, um, so to speak. Despite fostering their talents and mastering their crafts, the joy of simply doing the thing is often enough for them. Anything beyond that can seem unnecessary and excessive to them. Number 20. Them. They are who they are, and, at their best, teach us that same unapologetic self-acceptance too.